Good morning to you. Mark Suttoth here, HurricaneTrack.com. It is Saturday, the 17th day of June, 2023, and we are now tracking 92L. Remember, that's the number that is designated to these systems when they are what we call an invest. Invest area at 92L, the numbers go 90 through 99, and then they start over, and the L is for Atlantic, and uh, we're going to be watching this closely, a sign of a very favorable pattern in the Atlantic so far for June. A lot of questions about where this is going to go, how strong will it get, things like that. I'll do my best to answer some of those questions today. We'll take a look at what we've got. All right, let's get going. Thanks for joining me. I do appreciate your time and attention this morning as we check out what's happening here in the tropics. And there it is. Red now kind of escalated rather quickly, right? Up to, what do we got, about 70% chance of developing into a tropical uh, cyclone, a depression or stronger over the next seven days, this goes out to seven days now, the seven-day tropical weather outlook. 48 hours, it is uh, 40%, so it's orange on this particular graphic. So they have a 48 and a 168-hour outlook. But there it is way out here, and this really gives you a good perspective of where it is in the far southeastern tropical Atlantic not far off the coast of Africa and not too far to the southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands, also known as the Cape Verde Islands. Very, very rare to see something like this, this time of year. It is truly extraordinary. It really is. So here is a really neat set of tools from Dr. Levi Cowan over at Tropical Tidbits, the current storms section of his website. And I like this because it gives you a good dashboard of the various tools that we can take advantage of to see what's happening with our system or any future system. This is a satellite snapshot. If you click on it, I do believe it'll become animated. It does. We'll come back to this in just a minute. And then you have a position of where it's located. This gives you a good idea. These are the southern and southwesternmost Cabo Verde Islands. These are different ship reports that are out here. See, it's not just fish. There's no such thing as a fish storm. Um, we have marine interests that are out there, even when these are tropical waves, that they can uh, be impacted, uh, different marine maritime interests, right? And then these are some of the different models. We're going to come back to these in just a minute. All good things in due time. So here's an animated wide shot from Tropical Tidbits. There's the envelope of energy that we're tracking there, 92L. Clearly you can see just from this infrared satellite imagery, a lot of moisture out here. The upper level winds are not streaking along like this across the system. That's not happening. Instead, the upper level winds are just kind of fanning out in a clockwise fashion as shear out this way is very low right now. Where you do have strong upper level winds would be like across here and clearly over the southeast and into the western and southwestern Atlantic. Uh, and then probably elsewhere across parts of the subtropical Atlantic up here. Just not as obvious looking at cirrus clouds being stretched out. But this is what we're going to be watching right here. That's 92L, and it's going to track across this general region over the coming days with a very, very good chance of developing further. And if it does, it'll become a tropical depression next, and then eventually tropical storm Brett. That's the B storm. We'll see. This is what it looks like on the vorticity signature, still a little bit elongated and somewhat attached to the intertropical convergent zone, almost like a little embryonic system attached to its mother, if you will, through an umbilical cord. I'm not kidding. That's kind of similar in terms of the nutrients that are provided by said umbilical cord. Same thing with the intertropical convergent zone, feeding this fledgling system with moisture and helping to keep it energized as it moves through an environment that is normally not favorable this time of year. But it's going to get there over time, I think in 48 hours. When we look at this on Monday, this will, in fact, I should save this so we can compare the two. I'll make sure I do that. This is going to be a, a lot more rounded in appearance, and it'll be farther to the west, probably somewhere in here, and uh, much more round in its appearance, showing that it is bundling the energy, getting better organized. The more round cyclones are, 
on earth, the stronger they are, typically speaking. When they're elongated and stretched out, you can still have cyclonic vorticity in there, spin in the atmosphere, but it's not as concentrated. All right, here's what it looks like from the weathernerds.org site. And you can see some very broad general turning in here, tropical waves still, not a low pressure area just yet, but it's just a wave of energy. You have a very sharp axis in here uh, where the winds are coming this way, and then they turn this way over here, but you don't quite yet have southwesterly winds. That's not happening yet, so it's not closed off into a low pressure area. There is, you know, the air is, the air pressure is lower, but we don't have a closed low at the surface just yet, but it's going to get there. All right, sea surface temperatures, a lot has been made, and rightfully so, about how warm the sea surface temperatures are compared to average. All these anomalies, I certainly have been shouting from the rooftops, figuratively speaking, about it. Really going back to January, it seems, we just never had a very cold Atlantic in terms of the tropics, and things have just warmed up relative to average ever since. But what about the actual sea surface temperatures where our invest area will be tracking, not the anomalies? Well, it's located, there's the Cabo Verde Islands right there, and our system is located right in here. So water temperatures are already 26 Celsius. That is this line right here or warmer. The next line here, <clears throat> or isotherm, line of equal temperature, is 28 Celsius. So already it is moving into water temperatures, sea surface temperatures that are warm enough and warmer than average by a pretty good margin here. And I'm going to show you another graphic in a minute. And as it moves off in that general direction, the water temperatures will just gradually warm over time. And that's what's going to really help this to form. All right. And then, of course, the anomalies. We've been showing this a lot. These are the uh, these very positive anomalies, strong anomalies, warmer than normal all across that area. And we're going to talk about the El Nino over here more on Monday because there's some changes with it. It may be temporary, but some very interesting changes. So I'm going to tease that a little bit. And also, I want to draw your attention to this, what's happening off the Baja. Also, very, very interesting and not particularly good news for those of us in the Atlantic. Uh, so a little cliffhanger for you. Tune in on Monday. I'll talk more about that. So this is interesting, too. Love Ben Knoll and his insights. This map here highlights where current sea surface temperatures are warmer than they would typically be during September. Wow. In other words, yellow areas indicate where the sea is as warm right now as it would normally be three months from now, three months in time. That includes large swaths of the Atlantic main development region. Of course, that is where our invest area is located, a breeding ground for hurricanes. So let's just scroll down, click on this map, and enlarge it. Very good thematic map for those of you that know geography and mapping. These are the areas that are warmer than they would usually be, the water temperatures in September. Wow, just impressive there. Truly understanding and visualizing how warm this water is and what it means. And what it means is that we're now starting to see development when we would normally not see it displaced by perhaps 60 days time. Quite remarkable. Okay, now on to what most people want to know, I'm sure. Where is this going to go? How strong is it going to be when it gets there? Simple answer is we don't know yet, obviously. And it is still just in its formative stages, so that's very important to take into consideration. I'll show you a couple of the global operational runs. In other words, not ensembles, not yet. We'll look at that in a minute. We're going to look at the GFS first, and then the Euro, and then we're going to paint a very uh, simple-to-understand picture of how to think of this as we go forward. In, in, in other words, what to look for as we go forward. So first of all, let's get a color little pop here. This is what you're looking at right there. That's the envelope of energy that is Invest 92L. If I grab the little scroller up here, scrubber, whatever you want to call it, move it out in time, clearly it gets better organized. This is down at 5,000 feet in the atmosphere, and it moves on 
over the next four days, five days, and beyond. And then it hooks a hard right, right along roughly 60 degrees, 59 degrees longitude or so, maybe 58, something like that. Makes a hard right, and it avoids the islands completely. Tries to hook back just a little bit, but then eventually on out to sea. Now, taken verbatim, this right here would generate, potentially, I'd have to look and see, the single largest ACE score in the month of June. And for those of you that just laugh at that and say, who cares about ACE? Scientists do, because ACE is the true measure of the energy that is output from tropical cyclones. Damage, impacts, unfortunately deaths, are what most people judge tropical cyclones by. And that's totally understandable. Those people are not wrong. But the ACE score is very important to understand the quality of the tropical cyclones that form globally. Low ACE scores annually typically means that something is wrong in the tropics. High or anomalously high ACE scores also means something is wrong in the tropics. In other words, there's some kind of a discrepancy or anomaly going on when you have below average ACE or above average ACE, okay? And so this could potentially, I'll get in touch with a couple of brainiacs that I know. Statisticians is a better word to use, I think, but that's okay. And ask them, hey, what is the, I know who to ask, Dr. Klotzbach. I don't think he would mind at all being called a brainiac. He is truly brilliant. I'll ask him, what is the June record for Atlantic Ace? What is the one storm that did that? This could challenge that, I would have to think. Just looking at the vorticity, that's all we're looking at here. Never mind the surface map and whatnot. This just tells me that dark color in there looks like a black hole almost, right? Just and certainly on the map, that that is a very intense, small in aerial coverage, tropical cyclone in the model. So that's the GFS operational from 6Z this morning. Clearly not an impact to the islands directly. Could cause some swells and other things like that. We'll, we're, we're, we will worry about that later. This is the Euro, the ECMWF operational. Not quite as enthusiastic. It still develops it, but it weakens it later and then brings it right through the islands and then it kind of dies away in the Caribbean. So I think you can already understand my very simplistic way of approaching this. The stronger this gets early and stays strong, the more likely it is to feel the weakness in the subtropical ridge. Right now, there are breaks in the ridge across the Atlantic, so this can't just go all the way west. The stronger this gets early, it feels that weakness in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere and would head north probably well before the islands. The longer it takes to develop and uh, tracks more west early and stays relatively weak, doesn't become as strong as a GFS perhaps is suggesting, it feels the low level flow more and goes more west. It's kind of like the upper level trough is like a magnet. And if it stays small and insignificant, it doesn't feel that magnet. You understand? So the Euro is painting a different picture in that regard, as you can clearly see. Not quite as strong. So let's just compare these. At 144 hours, there's the Euro. And at 144 hours, there is the GFS. Yeah, that's a pretty big difference. And the reason is, this is a stronger cyclone in the GFS. There's your break in the ridge right there. That's your magnet, if you will. And you know, in cartoons, how magnets have those little, looks like lightning bolts that they use in cartoons to attract something. That's what will be attracting the cyclone. So we'll see what happens. And another way to visualize this too, I told you I'd come back to this, Dr. Cowan's models over here. Well, they're not his models, they are the plots that he makes. And you can clearly see the GFS, also known as the AVNI interpolated. Um, yeah, that's much farther to the north. All of these are much more to the south and west. A lot of the different models over here, including the H-Wharf and some of the um, consensus models. So the GFS might be an outlier in being overly aggressive in developing this, but it could develop later and still be stronger. There's just a lot of unknowns. 
uh, of course. That's always the case, right? Uh, and this is another way to look at it. This is the GFS Ensemble plot, 20-something-odd Ensemble members. The black here is the Ensemble mean, right? Right down the middle. And the GFS Ensemble mean, of course, is right into the heart of the Northeast Caribbean. So the bottom line, ladies and gentlemen, we need to watch this very closely. It is not a done deal. Oh, it's turning out to sea, and I mean, we don't know. Obviously, we don't know. It's more than uh, five days plus away, so we're going to have to just watch and see what happens over time. All right? All right, let me back out of here so I can get to my exit strategy and sign off for you. All right, so tomorrow, just so you know, I will be off. Got to spend some time with the family. It's Father's Day. This is not a threat right now, so everybody just chill tomorrow, whether you are a dad or not. Just take tomorrow off. Don't worry about it. It'll still be there Monday, and I'll be back Monday with a very comprehensive update on what is going on with our system, okay? And we'll take a look at some other stuff, including that sea surface temperature deal in the Pacific and some interesting things going on with El Nino potentially. All right? Have a great rest of your Saturday. Don't forget, especially if you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit that button, the notification bell. I'm told that it helps make a difference with the algorithms and whatnot. Plus, it's just great to have you watching. I do appreciate it very, very much. Again, have a great rest of your weekend. I'm off tomorrow. You should be too. It's Sunday. Take a day of rest, okay? I am Mark Setta, Hurricane Track. I'll be back with you again on Monday.